Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm Pierce from Yunnan University of China. Thank you for inviting me to this conference. Today, my topic is Bhutanitis in China, its conservation and challenges. First, let's take a look at the distribution range of Bhutanitis. Bhutanitis is a typical Sino-Himalaya element in Asia. The distribution range including China, India, Bhutan, Nepal, Myanmar, and Thailand. However, unfortunately, the population here in Thailand is distinct but extinct due to forest fire in 1983 as a result of severe El Nino. There are four species of Bhutanitis in China. Bhutanitis ludlowi in South Tibet and Bhutanitis lidodalia in South Tibet and Western Yunnan. The other two species, Bhutanitis tidina and Mansfieldi, are both endemic to China. Bhutanitis tidina could be found from Northwest Yunnan to Sichuan and to Qinling Mountains, while Bhutanitis Mansfieldi is restricted in two areas of Sichuan province and Yunnan province here. The habitat of Bhutanitis butterflies are very unique. In the Himalayas, the high altitude snow mountains and river valleys like this are not suitable for this species. But the medium and low altitude evergreen forest and river valleys are suitable habitats for Bhutanitis blidodalia and Bhutanitis ludlowi. However, in the Hunda Mountains, both forest and dry river valleys are suitable habitats for Bhutanitis tidina and Mansfieldi. This genus is protected in China. It is listed as the National Class II Protected Wildlife. Since 1989, Bhutanitis tidina, with its subspecies Dontranensis and Bhutanitis mansfieldi were listed. And recently in 2021, we added Ludlowi and Lidodalia to the list. They are also protected by CITES listed in Appendix 2, which means any collection and use of this species must agreed by authorities. Otherwise, there are legal consequences to people who take the specimens from nature. However, there are several threats to the species. First, the commercialized collecting is still alarming. Illegal collecting conducted by locals are very difficult to monitor and prices of certain species like Ludlowi and Chinese subspecies of uh, Lidodalia and Indian and Bhutan subspecies of Lidodalia. Also, the Yunnan subspecies of Mansfieldi are very, very steep. In comparison, the Myanmar subspecies of Bhutanitis Lidodalia and Bhutanitis tidina in China as well as the Sichuan subspecies of Mansfieldi are all very cheap. However, the collecting amount every year is very large. Habitat degradation and the collecting of the larval food plant for traditional Chinese medicine herbs also pose significant stress to the survival of Bhutanitis in China. Habitat disturbance like constructions and agriculture in Western China are considered to be the major threats to this species. And before 2014, the dried Aristolochia can be found easily in market as traditional Chinese herbs. However, after that, due to its uh, carcinogenic effect, the Aristolochia in traditional Chinese medicine is banned by law. So now the collecting of the larval of food plant is much less than before. 
The next threat is limited genetic diversity uh, among populations of uh, certain species. Take uh, Tidina, for instance. We discovered that among different subpopulations, the genetic diversity is very low, with only one dominant haplotype. These small subpopulations are all at risk in face of environment change because any genetic drift can easily push them into the vortex of distinct. And the metapopulation of all populations together are also at risk. Next, and also very important, um, <clears throat> climate change are, are now very strong in this area. Under current climate scenarios, we can see the suitable range of Butanitis tidina is connected to each other, with only this patch of populations in Chile Mountains isolated from the other parts. However, the major distribution range is safe. Unfortunately, under climate change in the future, in the 2050s, the high suitable areas of Tidina gradually isolated from one another, especially under the influence of the extreme scenarios. By the time of 2070, the isolation is more obviously, and the contraction of the suitable area is very alarming, especially in Sichuan province. So the populations are isolated from one another, leaving them at risk due to limited genetic diversity and limited uh, gene flow. As we can see, the contraction of uh, the habitat is very obviously in this chart, despite of the increasing in high suitable areas in, in certain mountains. Because of this, uh, threats. IUCN assessed the four species of Butanites, and all are not very op optimistic. First of all, Ludlowy is now endangered already, with its population trend during the past five years unknown. Lidadalii is least concerned, however, the population trend is also unknown. Tidina is now near threatened. However, its population trend near the past five years is decreasing. And the threats throughout its distribution range is ongoing in the future. And the Mansfield is vulnerable and still decreasing now. However, the Yunnan's population is still at risk compared to the Sichuan population. The conservation measures we took first is legislation in 1989. The Butanitis tidina and uh, Mansfieldy populations were listed by the protected, protected wildlife in China. And in 2021, we added Butanitis ludlowi and Lidadalia to the list with all synonyms used in China. The reason why we're doing this is, in the past, only certain subspecies were protected and the dealers and the collectors would say, my specimens are not protected by law. However, it is very difficult for the law enforcement agencies to distinguish one subspecies from another. So adding the synonyms and all species in the list would prevent legislation bias and the result more efficient, effective protection. And also, our wildlife protection law dictates that any use of the specimens, uh, live or dead, must, must apply for a permit in advance. Otherwise, there are legal consequences for the people who take specimens from nature. Uh, thanks to the policies and uh, legislation, and as well as the progress of protected areas and the national parks in China, the populations of Butanitis now is uh, more frequently seen in nature. As reported by this news uh, screenshot here, 
The population of uh, Botanitis lidadalia in Western Yunnan is abundant. Here, as we can see in the right season, there are tens of hundreds of male mud puddling in the forest. And during the past five years, we can easily observe a female uh, Botanitis tidina and its larva in the field in Yunnan province and Sichuan province. And also we implemented a public education program in Yunnan province for the for Botanitis tidina, and we established the first mountain uh, greenhouse uh, for the species uh, with a uh, public education purpose. Here we can uh, breed uh, tidina with the local communities participated in, and they are now aware of the importance and the vulnerability of tidina, and are very uh, willing to participate in the protect of this species in their neighborhood. Uh, conservation of Botanites also involves uh, captive breeding. Here in Yunnan, we did uh, Lidadalia, and we found that a commercial uh, species of uh, food plant, Aristolochia ovatifolia, could be used as substitution in the captive breeding experiment. This can be also used to restore the degraded habitats in the future. And also we discovered that the survival rates in each insta under captive breeding condition is very high. Uh, this is why uh, Lidadalia is now least concerned by IUCN assessment. And also uh, for Ludloe, this is done in Bhutan. Uh, they discovered that Griffithi is the major host plant and can be planted in greenhouse easily. And also they discovered several natural enemies during the breeding. These findings are very important and valuable to the conservations uh, for Botanitis ludlowi population in China in the future. Um, next, the captive breeding of Botanitis tidina in Shanxi province showed that Arstolochia mantrainensis can use as the food plant in nature and in greenhouse. And also they discovered that the pupil mortality is very high in breeding, but the, the mortality of larvae is very high in nature, but we still understand the reason why. Um, my team did the captive breeding of Botanitis tidina in Yunnan. They showed that we can use Aristolochia mollis as the food plant. Um, this easy to plant species can be used to restore the habitat and very easy to obtain from the other uh, plantations. We also discovered that pupil mortality is very high in winter in captive breeding conditions, but we we still don't understand why why this happened. But other instars like uh, eggs and larvae, the survival rates are very optimistic. Future research is required to understand this reason. Uh, there are several challenges for Botanitis conservation in China. First of all, most habitats are in Western China, where the landscapes, landscapes are more vulnerable to geological disasters and forest fires. Earthquake landslide and uh, other geological disasters can easily uh, kill butterflies in in that area. For instance, in Taiwan province, a landslide uh, followed earthquake uh, made the Papilio Makong uh, extinct in that area. And uh, forest fire in Thailand due to El Nino uh, killed uh, Botanitis Titan Lidadalia population there. And also human activities in that area cannot be avoided because the local household and their livelihood uh, both depend on natural resources. So future conservation programs must involve these indigenous people and uh, uh, community efforts. And next, commercialized collecting is still a potential threat, although the law forbid it. So we must uh, understand how many individuals can be taken from nature uh, in, uh, without damaging the population's future. Uh, so the quota for collection each year must be assessed in the future and the rational uh, method of collecting must be formulated as well.
Next, the botanitis uh, Mansfield in Yunnan province is still a miss. Um, since its discovery, only a handful of specimens were collected, especially around the 1990s by Japanese researchers. But during the last five years, there's no observation records of this species in the field. Uh, lack of data uh, becomes a bottleneck of uh, conservation. Uh, we don't know why. So in the future, we must uh, address this uh, question and to solve this uh, uh, issue. And for future research, we must understand the genetic diversity and the metapopulation resilience and how they interact with each other, how the genetic flow uh, interact. And next, the suitable disturbance for each species, whether to protect the species under strict uh, condition in na national parks or nature reserves, or any kinds of disturbance and which form is good for the species must be understood. And next, and also the very important, climate change. Climate meet vulnerability for each species must be assessed, especially in this area the, with the increasing temperature, warm winter, and uh, less and but extreme rainfall every year. How could they survive these extreme conditions in the future is very important to form the uh, conservation strategies. And finally, we must uh, understand the life history of uh, the Yunnan population of Mansfieldi, uh, which is the nominal typical subspecies. And uh, what's the relationship phylogenetically with the Sichuan population, whether they are the same species or they are separate species, because the morphological characters of the two are very different. And this, this is my uh, presentation, presentation today, and this is my team. Uh, they traveled a lot during the uh, past five years uh, through Yunnan and Tibet uh, for botanitis species, for the conservation, for taxonomy, and for many other research. And also thanks to my foreign colleagues who uh, offered many valuable comments uh, to the project. And also thanks for the funding agencies um, in China and uh, overseas. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, that's all.